This is the Daughters of Sheba Foundation's point of view, an analysis of current issues that impact women, children, and families. We want to clarify that we do not own the copyright of some of the videos featured in our episodes. These materials are used within the guidelines of fair use, as outlined in Section 107 of the Copyright Act, and all rights remain with the original copyright owners. Disclaimer. As permitted by Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, some materials are used under the fair use provision for purposes including criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. We encourage you to watch the videos and share your thoughts in the comments. Marriage, as a social institution, has been around for thousands of years. With things that are thousands of years old, it is easy to assume that they can only change slowly. But that might not be so true when it comes on to divorce, at least. With developments since the middle of the 20th century, we are told, it shows that this assumption is wrong. In many countries, marriages are becoming less common. People are marrying later, unmarried couples are increasingly choosing to live together, and in many countries, we are seeing a decoupling of parenthood and marriage. Within the last decades, the institution of marriage has changed more than in thousands of years before. Let's dive into that today. Why get a divorce after 25 years of marriage? The short answer is because it is not too late to be happy. And I finally got to a point at the beginning of the year where I decided that it wasn't too late to be happy. I still have hopefully many more years left and I would like to be happy for those years. And that was never going to happen inside my current marriage. No matter how many wonderful people, supportive people, positive people you surround yourself with, uh, it will never have as much of an impact if you have toxic people in your home. And the two most toxic people in my life, two most toxic adults in my life, live in my home with me right now. And uh, my husband was definitely someone that sabotaged all of my efforts to try and get healthy, to try and feel better to be more successful, to be happy. I don't know whether it was intentional or not, and it really doesn't matter at this point. I want to be happy. I want to be hopeful. I want to surround myself with people and experiences and success and love and peace that I will never be able to find if I stay married. And so we're getting a divorce. And the best way I can really describe that experience of 25 years, it's like climbing or riding in a roller coaster to the highest peak. And it's just one click at a time, one thing at a time. And then you finally get to the top and that's the tipping point. There is no going back. There's nothing to fix, no desire anymore to try and fix things. You've already put in that effort. And it's a free fall to a new life and new experiences. And I am so looking forward to those. And so today I am really grateful for the new experiences I am about to have because I am going to be able to surround myself with wonderful people and um, amazing experiences. Marriages are becoming less common. In many countries, marriage rates are declining. The portion of people who are getting married is going down in many countries across the world. And that's no surprise because as women get more economic independence, they realize that they have a choice. For example, for the US, um, the data on marriage rates going back to the 20th century shows that 
1920, shortly after the First World War, there were 12 marriages annually for every 1,000 people in the U.S. In the 1930s, during the Great Depression, that rate fell sharply. Then, marriage rates fell again in the 1950s and then bounced back. The long decline started in the 1970s. Since 1972, marriage rates in the U.S., for example, have fallen by almost 50%. And for non-rich country, although the data is sparse, but available estimates from Latin America, Africa, and Asia suggest that the decline of marriages is not exclusive to rich countries. Let's watch some more. And 90% of divorces can be predicted by this. It's when your partner is trying to connect and you reject them. What I mean by this is, say, for example, you know, your partner comes home from work and is like, oh, I'm so tired. And you turn around and say, why are you tired? What have you done all day? That creates distance. Or if they say, I want to watch this, and your partner's like, you watch shit shows. Instead of saying, all right, cool, we'll watch it. It's little things like when they're trying to connect with you, do you respond and be like, all right, cool, I'll watch it with you? Or do you say, your programs are shit, and you create that non-responding to their emotional connections? It doesn't mean men and women it's anybody so if you see your partner sad and you don't even look at them whereas a partner that says hey what's wrong with you and responds to it immediately responding to each other's bids for connection is what leads to a happy relationship and people who don't it's disconnect and there's a slow divorce then it leads to cheating then it leads to looking somewhere else because you're feeling like my partner doesn't see me and i think if you want to ever start a family you owe your children two dedicated parents to make sure that child receives the best care in the world whereas when you don't do this children are born and and they're traumatized by two parents mm. who can't love the child enough to just put their differences aside. Love and marriage goes together like a horse in a ca- and a carriage. Can't sing. Anyway, <laughs> divorce isn't such a tragedy. A tragedy is staying in an unhappy marriage, teaching your children the wrong things about love. Nobody ever died of divorce, said Jennifer Weiner, the author of Fly Away Home. Thanks for watching. Do join us again for our next Point of View. This was the Daughters of Sheba Foundation's point of view, an analysis of current issues that impact women, children, and families. Thanks for watching. We would love to hear your feedback on the topic discussed in this video. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.